Grace and peace, everyone. Today is January 1st, 2023. Happy New Year. Welcome to the Christ Fellowship Baptist Church Sunday School Meeting, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II. My name is Dolores Gerald, and I am your facilitator for this meeting. We meet every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. If you would like more information about our church, please visit our website at www.christfellowshipbaptistchurch.org. Our lesson today is titled Promises and Consequences. It is taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 through 22. So get your Bibles out and let us pray. Father God, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for being God and God all by yourself, for being the great I am, for being the Holy One of Israel, for being the one who sits high and looks low and sees each and every one of us, for being the one that knows every hair on our head, every thought in our heart, every step that we take in every situation that we face. And you are with us in the midst of it all. And we thank you for that. Thank you. Father God, for being God, for being the one who woke us up this morning in our right mind, for being the one that gave us new grace and new mercy on this day. Thank you, Father God. Father, we ask right now that you forgive us of anything that we have said, done, thought that was not pleasing in your sight. Father, forgive us, restore us to righteousness. Hallelujah. Father God, I ask right now that you bless each and every person who thought it not robbery to get up and come and seek your face this morning. I ask right now that you bless them, bless their households, bless their households of faith, bless the pastors over those households of faith. Father God, I ask that you gird pastors up on every side, Father God, every weak side, every leaning side, every side, Father God. I ask that you Put a hedge of protection around them and their families as they go about doing the work that you have called them to do in the vineyard. Father God, I ask right now that you um, prepare every heart, every mind, every eye, every ear, every spirit to receive whatever it is Holy Spirit has for us today. I ask right now that you hide me behind the cross that I might not be seen. Holy Spirit, you stand up. You do the teaching. I've done the preparation, but I'm not always able. I ask that you give me ears to hear what you would have me to speak, a mouth to speak clearly what you would have me to say, and eyes to see what you've given me to see. I ask all of these things in the mighty matchless name of the, of the wonderful, mighty Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, our Lord, our Savior, our King. Amen. 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 Ruby, no, Darlene's reading? No. Ruby, you're going to read for me? Thank you. Second Chronicles chapter 7, starting at verse 12. Hmm. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour, to devour the man or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their weakness, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attended to prayer made in this place house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. perpetually as for you if you walk before me as your father David walked and do according to all that I have commanded you and if you keep my status and my judgment then I will establish the throne of your kingdom as I covenant with David your father saying, you shall not fail to have a man as ruler in, in, Egypt, in Israel. But if you turn away or forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and go and serve our God and worship them, then I will uproot them from my land, which I have given them. And this house which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out my sight and will make it a make it a proverb mm -hmm. and a by word among all people. Okay. 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 And, and as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done this?
to this land and this house. Then they will answer because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt and embraced other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this calamity on them. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Ruby. Thank you so much, Darlene, for the reading of the word. So today we begin a new series of lessons called God's Promises. We will explore the promises that the Most High God has given to his people, Israel. Our lesson today is about promises and consequences. Throughout the word, all of God's promises are conditional. Each one has a set of circumstances or deeds or behaviors that must be done before the promise is executed. All right. Um, or before the promise can be manifested. The background for today's lesson is the dedication of Solomon's temple. And you can read about these events in 1 Kings chapters 8 and 9. And I suggest that you do. 1 Kings chapter 8 and 9 and 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and 6. Solomon has just completed the building of the temple and he has called all the elders of the nation of Israel together to gather in Jerusalem to dedicate the temple. The time of the dedication is given in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 2, which reads, Therefore, all the men of Israel assembled with King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. Amen. The seventh month was called Ethanim before the Babylonian captivity. It is now called Tishri. During the 70 years captivity in Babylon, the Israelites adopted many of the names of the Babylonian culture and accepted those names in the place of the original Hebrew names given to them by their ancestors. And that was the case for many of the months of the year. Almost all of the names of the months were changed during the Babylonian captivity to accept the Babylonian names for the month rather than the Hebrew names for the month. Another example, the first month is called Abib in Exodus. But now it's called Nisan, and Nisan is a Babylonian name. The seventh month was the month of holy feast until the Most High God. There was the Feast of Trumpets on the first day of the month, which is called Rosh Hashanah. There was the Day of Atonement on the 10th day of the month, called Yom Kippur. There was the Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkah, from the 15th day to the 22nd day of the same month, which is also called the Feast of Ingathering. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles was one of the three holy feasts in which every Israelite male was required to present themselves before Yahweh as commanded in Exodus 23, verses 14 through 17, which reads, three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. You shall keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded you at the, the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty. And the Feast of Harvest, the first fruit of your labor, which you have sown in the field, which is Pentecost, which is sown in the field. And the Feast of Ingathering at the end of the year, when you have gathered in the fruit of your labors from the field. Three times in the year, all your males shall appear before the Lord God. Amen. So the dedication of the temple was set to coincide with the Feast and Holy Days of the seventh month. Second Chronicles chapter five, verse three reads, therefore, all the men of Israel assembled with the king at the feast, which was in the seventh month. Amen. And first Kings chapter eight, verses 65 and 66, it reads, at that time, Solomon held a feast and all Israel with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt before the Lord, our God, seven days and seven more days, 14 days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away and they blessed the king and went to their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the good that the Lord had done for his servant David and for Israel, his people. Amen. Now, when you read that last verse, you would get the notion that in the middle of the feast, Solomon sent the people away. However, the eighth day spoken of in this verse is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And according to Leviticus 23, verses 33 and through 36, it reads, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles, for seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. 
for seven days, you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly and you shall do no customary work on it. Amen. Now, this may sound confusing. How could the feast be for seven days, but on the eighth day, there's a sacred assembly? And we need to always keep in mind that Genesis 1 verse 5 says, and the evening and the morning were the first day. The day starts at twilight. Okay. The feast was for seven complete days. On the morning of the eighth day, there was a holy convocation. So for seven days, they feasted. And on the last day, the eighth day, they came together for holy assembly and then they were dismissed. Okay. So that holy convocation at the conclusion of the feast was the day that Solomon blessed the people and sent them away. This was the last half of the celebration dedicated to the temple. And I'm, I'm going to park here for a minute. There was 14 days of celebration. There was the seven days that included the Feast of Tabernacles. But the prior 14 days, so you had the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, which was the first day. The second day is when Solomon started his seven days of dedication for the temple. In the middle of that, on the 10th day, was Yom Kippur. They did that, and then they continued the celebration until they got to the end of the end gathering. All right, just so you know the, the order of events. All right, so now the temple dedication itself, like I said, occurred in the first seven days of the celebration, the seven days prior to the Feast of Tabernacles. As the Ark of the Covenant was brought into the new temple and placed in the holy place, in the Holy of Holies, along with everything else from the Tabernacle of Meeting. There were many sacrifices that they made. Second Chronicles chapter five, verses six through eight read. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with him before the ark were sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for the multitude. Then the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place into the inner sanctuary of the temple to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. But the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. Amen. Once the ark of the covenant was in place, the worship began. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verses 13 and 14 read, Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and the singers was as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voices with the trumpet and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. So the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Amen. The presence of the glory cloud indicated Yahweh's acceptance of the temple that was built in his honor to worship him. There were many occasions when the presence of Yahweh manifested itself as a cloud. The dark cloud on top of Mount Sinai in the giving of the Lord in Exodus chapters 19 and 20. The glory cloud at the completion of the altar in, in the tabernacle of meeting in Exodus chapter 40. In the pillar of cloud by day and fire by night in the wilderness in the book of Numbers. In the glory cloud to Isaiah in, a chap, in Isaiah chapter 6 and to Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 1. Just to name a few. There are many more, but those are the few. After the glory cloud filled the sanctuary. Solomon lifts up a prayer on behalf of the people. And you can find that entire prayer in 2 Chronicles chapter 6. In that chapter, Solomon prays and asks Yahweh to bless the temple and bless the people and give ear to the prayers made in the temple and towards the temple. He gives a very lengthy prayer, taking in almost all considerations of what the people might do by way of sin and trespassing against Yahweh and ask him to forgive the people when they repent. As he prays, he acknowledges that no temple could contain the most high God. He says in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 14 and 18, and it reads, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants, who walk before you with all their hearts, but will God indeed dwell with men on earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Amen. 
Second Chronicles 7 verses 1 through 3 reads, when Solomon had finished praying, Fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple and the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory cloud of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Amen. The fire coming down to consume the offering was a sign of acceptance of the offerings presented. Just like for Moses in Leviticus chapter 9, verse 24, and for Gideon in Judges chapter 6, verse 21, and for David at the same site as the temple in 1 Chronicles 21, verse 26, and then for Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 38. After all of these things, there was more worship and many more sacrifices made. Then the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles was held. And on the eighth day, Solomon sent the people away. Amen. Here's where our lesson starts, okay? Any comments or questions on the background that I've, I've covered? Amen, glory be to God. Okay, so let's dig in. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 12, and it reads, then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yahweh appears to Solomon at night, meaning in a dream. And this is the second time in answer to his prayer. The first time was in Second Chronicles chapter one, when he asked for wisdom. Yahweh says to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Amen. Just in case the presence of the glory cow and the fire coming down from heaven and consuming the sacrifices on the altar were not clear enough signs to Solomon, mm -hmm. Yahweh gives him a visitation mm -hmm. so that Solomon understands that he approves of the work that has been done in the temple and all is acceptable in his sight. There are several things that Yahweh tells Solomon. First, he has heard Solomon's prayer. Mm -hmm. The one prayed in 2 Chronicles chapter 6. And he has come to give Solomon an answer to that prayer. And that's a lesson for us saying, mm -hmm. the most high hears our prayer yes, and he answers when our prayer. Yes, yes, he will. He will answer. answer. That's right. He will answer. All right. Second, Yahweh tells Solomon that he has chosen the temple as a place for his presence. And he has approved of it as a house of sacrifice the designated place for all sacrifices to be made to him for all the tribes of Israel. Moses told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses five through seven, which reads, but you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses out of all your tribe to put his name for his dwelling place. And there you shall go. There you shall take your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, your vowed offerings, your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all to which you have put your hand, you and your households, in which the Lord your God blesses you. Amen. Amen. The temple that Solomon has built was according to the specifications given to him by his father David. In 1 Chronicles 28 verses 11 through 13, it reads, then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the vestibule, its houses, its treasuries, its upper chambers, its inner chambers, and the place of the mercy seat, and the plans for all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, and of all the chambers all around, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries for the dedicated things, also for the division of the priests and the Levites, for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and for all the articles of the service in the house of the Lord. Amen. The temple that was in the heart of David to build, that Solomon was commanded to build, mm -hmm. Yahweh has just designated to be the place where all sacrifices were to be made to him. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 7 verses 13 and 14 and it reads, when I shut up heaven and there's no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. Mm -hmm. Solomon prayed 
in 2 Chronicles 6, verses 26 and 27, which reads, when the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they pray towards this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servant, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way which they should walk and send rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance, amen. And then he prayed in 2 Chronicles 6, verses 29 and 30. Whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone, I by all your people, Israel, when each one knows his own burden and his own grief and spreads out his hands towards this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose hearts you know, for you alone know the hearts of the sons of men. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then he prays in 2 Chronicles 6, verses 36 to 39, which says in part, when they sin against you, but there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they take them captive to a land far or near. Yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent and make supplication to you in the land of their captivity. And when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity and pray toward their land, which you gave to their father, the city which you have chosen and toward the temple, which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Amen. All of these things and many others, Solomon prayed to Yahweh for him to hear the prayer of the people who pray in and towards the temple that was built and dedicated to him and to answer from his home in heaven and forgive the sin of the people. Mm -hmm. Solomon acknowledged that Yahweh did not reside in the temple, but in heaven. And from heaven, he can hear the prayers of anyone who prays to him from anywhere they are. And that's a lesson for us. Mm -hmm. Our father in heaven is everywhere. And as first Peter three, verse 12 says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to his prayers. Amen. He sees us and hears our prayers and answers when we call. Glory be to God. Yahweh responds to Solomon's prayer with, when I shut up the heaven and there's no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. Amen. And that these were things that Solomon had prayed about. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is saying these things will happen because as Moses said to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 24, you have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Amen. Mm -hmm. The most high God knows all things, sees all things and knows the mm -hmm. heart of every man. He knows that they will rebel and sin against him. So he says, when they commit sin, not if they commit sin. All right. Okay. <laughs> Yahweh goes on to say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. Here's a promise of restoration. However, the promise is conditional. There are stipulations that must be met before the promise is granted. And this is typical of the promises of the Most High to his people. There is some requirement that must be met, some terms that must be filled, some prerequisite that must be satisfied, usually involving obedience to his will, his way, his commands, his laws, his statutes and ordinances. The blessing of all of his promises is in obedience to his will. This promise starts with if followed by a set of commands, and then continues with then, followed by the blessing. Mm -hmm. This type of sentence is called a conditional statement. If a set of conditions is met, then the desired result can be achieved. The conditional if-then statement is used often in life. It's about choices. The choices you make determine the outcome of your circumstances. Mm -hmm. In the kingdom, the choice to be obedient to the Father always results in blessings when all is said and done, mm -hmm. all right? This particular promise has several stipulations that need to be met before the promised blessing will be given. First, ask yourself a question. Do you belong to the Most High God? Is his name on you? Are you one of his own children? Mm -hmm. If the answer is yes, then you've met the first requirement. Mm -hmm. The next few commands require a choice to be made. Humble yourself. 
First Peter chapter five, verses five and six says, yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Humility is a choice to submit to the father. Mm -hmm. That's the second requirement. Next is to pray. Ephesians 6 verse 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication mm -hmm. with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Prayer brings you in communion with the Father. Yeah. A praying heart is a humble heart. That's the third requirement. Mm -hmm. Next is to seek the face of the Father. How do you do that? With prayer, praise, and worship. Mm -hmm. Prayer brings you into communion with the Father. Mm -hmm. Praise exalts the Father, raising yes. him above anything else in your life. Yes. And worship is submission to the Father. Mm -hmm. All of these acts are acts of humility. Mm -hmm. A praying heart is a humble heart. A heart that praises the Father, raises him up, giving him first place in your heart. Mm -hmm. And in order to worship, you must bow down, which again gives the Father first place in your heart. Mm -hmm. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 3 says, Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness. Seek humility. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 51, verse 1 says, Listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit of which you were dug. Amen. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, our Lord says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. When you seek to do right as the Father commands, you seek his face. That is the fourth requirement. Last is to turn for their wicked ways. This is repentance. Repentance is defined as the decision to change one's mind for the better mm -hmm. with disgust, loathing, or hatred of one's past actions. Mm -hmm. To change from the way of sin while at the same time turning towards God. This is a permanent change in mind and direction called godly sorrow. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 says, for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world or worldly sorrow produces death. Amen. Repentance is a heart as well as a mind change. First Samuel chapter 16, verse seven reads, for the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. Amen. Yahweh knows the heart and knows when a person is truly repentant and turned from evil and wickedness. This too is a choice to submit to the will of the Father. That is the fifth and last requirement. All of these conditions, requirements, and stipulations must be met before the promise of, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land comes. All right? A note for us today. Many people are quoting 2 Chronicles 7.14 and asking the Father to heal our land. Mm -hmm. However, there's one condition of this promise that they are neglected, and that's to turn from their wicked ways. They don't want to do that. Many of the socially acceptable behaviors of people today are abominations in the sight of the Father. Amen. Sexual immorality is Amen. at our all-time high in this nation, wow. and it is practiced by many who profess Yes. To be Christian. Exactly. Mm. That's what's up what a person me. does speaks loudly, mm. way more loudly than what they say. Mm. Exactly. They forget that Yahweh says, but the Lord looks at the heart. Mm. Okay? okay. You can say it with your mouth. We, we talked about that before. Some people walk a good game. They, go. they put they on talk, a good, good talk. They, talk talk talk. Talk. <laughs> they got a mask that they put on, but the God looks at the heart. Amen. And, and you're not going to get past the heart. You sure ain't. Any, any comments or questions? You got a question? Say, uh, um, this COVID thing in our land right now, and I think, and I said it at the beginning, if we could if we repent, you know, if, 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 if the people, and you would have felt, if you would have thought, with all of that death, along with when God was wiping, he was allowing all of that death, that if we had to repent it, 
and did that praising and praying to God, he would have healed that land. But here's the thing. I believe he would have healed. No, no. You are absolutely right. <laughs> if they had repented, but right. again, repentance is turning from the thing the side, that God hates. Mm -hmm. You have to hate what he hates. There you go. We're in this society where they've legalized some abominations. Mm -hmm. they've, they've corrupted his covenants and his signs. They've, they've yeah. allowed things that he says are an abomination to be normalized. Right. And so yeah. if you if man doesn't think it's wrong and you're telling them that God says it's wrong, but why is it wrong? Mm -hmm. So you can't repent if you don't think that what you're yeah, doing is you wrong. Know, and that's what I was about to comment. Like they don't think that it's that wrong. Is wrong. They that's don't. That's why they do it every day and don't see, don't have a problem with it whatsoever. Yeah. And, and they don't feel that it's wrong. Exactly. And, and one more thing I'm going to ask, you got these confirming churches out there. That telling everybody that God loves you, God loves you, God's not going to yeah, send you to hell or whatever, whatever, whatever. whatever. <laughs> However, if the if the Lord says it's an abomination, it's an How abomination. <laughs> all right. Period. If He says it's a sin, it's a sin. No he may want. love you. He may love you, but He hates that sin. How about that? And that <laughs> sin is going to keep you from getting into glory. Okay. These laws, like you said, that that's an abomination to God. Yes. My grandmother used to always say, "God bless the dead." Man's law, small yes. L. Right. God's law, capital L, L, which precedes right. any All law laws. of the land. That's right. You know. So she that's said, right. "Man's law, God say, you know, we're supposed to follow the that law of the land. land. Law of the land. But, but when it goes against God's law, God's law." Now you're, you're mm -hmm. in trouble. You're in trouble. You have to, and see, here's that thing where I said that um, if you're obedient to the will and the way of the Lord, mm -hmm. it will work out better in the end. You might run into some stress and strife oh, with man, yeah, yeah. but he ain't got a heaven or hell to put you in. Not at all. But the Father do. How about it? How about that? <laughs> okay. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verses fifteen and sixteen. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Amen. Mm -hmm. After Yahweh gives Solomon the stipulations required for answered prayer for the people, he tells them that his eyes will be open and his ears attentive to prayers made in the temple. And that's a comfort for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is saying that he sees and hears us. Not only does he see and hear us, he is attentive and listens to our requests, petitions, and supplications made to him. When Yahweh tells Solomon that he has chosen and sanctified the temple so that his name can be placed there and may be there forever, he has made the temple holy or sanctified. But wherever the Most High is present, that place is holy, as was the ground that Moses stood on at the burning bush when he told him, take up your sandals for the ground that you stand on is holy. As when Joshua encountered the command of the Lord's army in Joshua chapter five, when he told him, take up your sandals because the place where you stand is holy. <laughs> so wherever the most high is, that place is holy. And now that the temple has been sanctified, his eyes and his heart can be there perpetually. It's an awesome thing to know that the eyes and the heart of the most high can look on us because of the indwelling of Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We too are sanctified and, and, and holy unto the Lord. First Corinthians 6 verse 11 says, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Amen. 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 Grace and peace, Pastor. And joy unto you, my sister. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 17 through 22. And it reads, as for you. If you walk before me as your father David walked and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom as I, as I covenant with David, your father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man as a ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot them from my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight and will make it a proverb and a byword among all people. And as for this house, which is exalted, 
everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, why has the Lord done thus to this land and this house? Mm -hmm. Then they will answer because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt and embraced other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this calamity on them. Amen. They're going to ask the question, but they're going to turn around and answer it too. <laughs> there you go. Here, we have another example of a conditional promise. <clears throat> Yahweh tells Solomon, if you walk before me as your father David walked and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom as I covenant with your David, your father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man as ruler in Israel. Amen. There are a set of requirements that must be met. Mm -hmm. That's the if portion of the promise. That if he does as his father David and walk before the Lord in righteousness, and if he is obedient to the Lord, then he will receive the same covenant promise as David did. The then portion is contingent on Solomon living out the if portion. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with all of the promises of God. Mm -hmm. All right. There's a condition in order to receive the promise. All right. Solomon needs to be obedient to the commands of the Lord and by that walk righteous before him. If he does that, then his throne will be established forever, as it was promised to his father David. Mm -hmm. However, Yahweh issues a warning to Solomon. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes mm -hmm. and my commandments, which I have set before you and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot them, meaning the people from my land which I have given them and this house, hmm. which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight and make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. Amen. Solomon's prayer was for the people to be established in the land and be forgiven of their sins if they repent. Yahweh is saying that if the people turn from him by worshiping a servant of the God, then he will uproot them from the land. And when a plant or a tree is uprooted, there's no trace left of it. And it cannot grow back in that place at all. All right. Right. In the same way, the people will be removed out of the land. And not only that, but the temple that Yahweh sanctified to himself that he made holy to himself, mm -hmm. he will cast, throw, fling it out of his sight. In other words, remove it from where it stands. The desolation will be so total mm. that those who saw it in its splendor will ask, how did it get that way? Mm -hmm. And why did the Most High God allow it to be destroyed? It will become a byword or a proverb, mm. a visual representation of the saying. That's what happens when you disobey God. <laughs> mm. All okay. right. <laughs> Yahweh was a little more direct when he expressed what the passersby would say. He says, and as for this house, which is exalted, and everyone who pass by it will be astonished and say, why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Mm -hmm. Then they will answer, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt and embraced other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this calamity on them. Amen. The warning is clear. Follow Yahweh and live in peace and prosperity. Follow false gods and live in disgrace, poverty, and be displaced from the land. Again, the Most High is given a choice. He knows the heart and knows when a person is truly walking in righteousness. In essence, choose the way of the Most High God and live. This too is a choice to submit to the will of the Father. Humbleness always leads to peace with the father all right history tells us that solomon failed to live out the if portion of the problem mm -hmm. <laughs> because he chased after other gods later in life and as a result the promised seed yeshua jesus came from his brother nathan's line mm -hmm. through mary's father heli also the temple he built was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. after a long period of apostasy and repentance in Israel. So again, Yahweh demonstrates that his word is true mm -hmm. and that he is faithful to keep his word and his promises. And he also, you know, just, and then just piggybacking off of what you said, nothing about what God does or says changes. 
because this was something that he told the children of Israel coming out of when Egypt. They took, came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Follow my precepts, my concepts. If you don't, plagues gonna be visited on you, like just was like, like I was on the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So, and even Joshua, yeah. crossing over, he telling them when the they the promised land, keep God's precepts. Prom keep them, because that's for me and my house. That's what we fit to do. We gonna, but it. you know, if y'all don't do it. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and and here's the thing. All through their history, mm -hmm. you look in Judges, the back, the forward, yes. the back, the yes. forward. All right. You look at even when David was being risen to be king, there was the back and the forth, the mm -hmm. back and the forth. It wasn't until David became king that they settled down to worship the Most High God. And, and, and Solomon inherited that. But at the end of his life, he went left. Mm -hmm. All right. And when he went left, the only reason why there was two tribes to think about this, Yahweh made a promise to David, but he told Solomon that if you mess up, I'm going to take it from you. Mm -hmm. All right. He left two tribes because of his promise to David. He left two oh, tribes and he left yes. two tribes to the house of David because of his promise to David, yes. but he took the other 10 away mm -hmm. because of Solomon's mm -hmm. disobedience. Mm -hmm. All right. Then when you get down, they go back and they forth. The prophets come. They obedient, they disobedient. They did the back and forth. Mm. Then you get to Josiah. Mm. He was the last righteous king yep. in yep. Israel. <laughs> and God was ready to drop judgment on Israel. But because Josiah was yes. righteous, he said, not in your lifetime. Mm. He's faithful to yes. keep his word. Yes, he is. And yes. right after Josiah died, what happened? It was all. Here came Egypt. <laughs> took one king, here come Babylon, took another king, here come Babylon again, destroy the temple, take the king, take the people, because they were disobedient. Mm -hmm. He's faithful to keep his promises. He's so faithful to keep his yes, promises. He and he's disobedient. <laughs> now, now we, with all of this, let, let me, we are still disobedient. But here's the thing, all right? I, I, you, you mentioned that. Let me just throw this out there. All right. All right. There's always a remnant. He, he said to Elijah, in 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 first kings somewhere that i have seven thousand that never bowed a knee and never kissed the foot of bell mm. that i reserved for myself in the same way he has a remnant today mm. there are those that will not compromise on his at will all. and his word not, at not. all and those that don't not compromise on his will and his word no matter what are his remnant there's gonna come a time since where you're gonna have to make a choice. Make a choice. You're either gonna stand for God or you're gonna fall for the enemy. Where do you stand? Where, where do you stand? And it's gonna be a serious thing where, okay, you either, you're gonna live the way God says or die because the enemy wants you to live the way they want to. Mm -hmm. you're, you're gonna have to make a choice. It's right. coming. It's coming closer than we think it is. The pressure is already get it, here. Get, get, get it in your heart. Yeah. Get it in your heart what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. What you're gonna do? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say that's for me at my house. <laughs> we gonna serve the Lord. Glory <laughs> be to God. <laughs> there you go. There any you comments? Go. Any questions? Because that's my lesson. And that's and I, I just want to add that and it's going like you said it's gonna come that time. That time is here, and the pressure is gonna be on because mm -hmm. you just like with our kids, grandkids, whatever, and we at some point in time in school, we had that peer pressure to do certain things. This is what the crowd is doing. I don't want to look silly and off and like a, you know, whatever. So I'm going to go with them. So right fast forward to today, all this abomination, people are going along to get along. Uh -huh. And you're supposed to be for God, but you're going with them because, hey, you don't want to be an outcast. Well, here's so forth like that, but there's consequences yes. to oh. doing that. Okay, I'm going to say one, I'm going to say this. <laughs> I'm going to say, let me, I'm going to talk about me. Mm -hmm. But you talking about their peer pressure came and mm -hmm. you got to make a choice that you're going to follow everybody else or yeah, yeah. you're going to do what's right. Mm -hmm. I had to deal with my mother. I had to deal with my mother. Mm -hmm. And she laid down a set of, certain, set of, a set of rules and regulations right, right, right. that you was not going to go across because you got to deal with her. There you go. I, I got to make a choice. There's a choice. Yeah. I'm either going to follow what they want or I'm going to follow what my mama wants. Right. I got to go live with my mama. Yeah. You ain't living with them. I, I, I can leave y'all alone. I can do without y'all. I, I got to live with my mama. All right. And, and that's the kind of things that we have to keep in Get mind. Yes. We have to keep those things in mind. Yes. Even now, as we are part of the village, because most of us, our children are grown, we're going to be grandchildren and nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. We got to give them an, an out. 
I remember one time somebody said, give your children the option to blame you so they don't have to get involved in something. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so, so That's they can true. say, I, like I can't do that because my mama said, right. right. I, I, I'm not getting into that because my mama said, or my daddy said, yeah. blame me. I don't have a problem with it because if it's going to keep you from getting into some trouble, blame me. That reminds me of a time I cut you off over glass, and um, he said, um, I told him I don't want him in the park after dark. Mm -hmm. He's going to get back around 13 mm -hmm. yeah, or something. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Something had happened in the park. It was a shootout or something. Right. And I asked him, you know, he had came home. Right. But I was like, why do you, you know, I'm surprised why you came home. He wasn't with them. He was like, you said you don't want me to park at the door. Like, like he had to do, you know, he had to do his friends and me. Right. I got to come home to you. Right. Like, I'm worried about what you're going to do. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, he, and, and that kept him healthy. It kept him alive. He's still here today because. He feared you. I had to tell that to somebody. Right. When my son was maybe, I don't know, four or five, I said, you see that right there? That's not a little boy. That's a little man. Mm -hmm. I said, he, if he don't fear nobody but me, he going to fear me because right. I'm not going to the jailhouse. I'm not going to the courthouse because he going to say, my mama going to kill me. And he going to be right. And he going to be right. And then people want to judge, oh, corporal punishment and all this. Listen. Stuff. Listen. My son's going to be 50, and he tells my great-grand, the only reason why I'm here, I didn't do stuff, because I had to deal with my mom. <laughs> yeah, but, we, so but, you see, but you understand, but you understand, this is how we were raised, this is how we raised right. ours, and we want them to raise theirs the same yeah, way, exactly. because it got us to where we are now. And not only that, but maybe too. Yes. Because years ago, like my girlfriend, mm -hmm. she used to see my grandson around with his friends, mm -hmm. two of the kids, two of the boys that I shot and killed. Wow. Mm -hmm. And my and he used to hang around. You know, my daughter used to have all the boys come to the house, play new mm -hmm. games. So right. My grandson was fortunate enough to have toys, games, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So two of his friends were shot. So my girlfriend would come out, see him on the corner around where she at. What are you doing here? Right. I don't want to see you around here no more. Right. Get away from here. Exactly. He got so he, he, he got, got so scared, scared that he, he stopped going to that mm -hmm. way. Right. Now he's voiced in, graduated from high school. Look at that. He get ready to uh, go for severe welding mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And um, if not, he trying to he's scared of welding because they could not get sick behind that welding. Mm -hmm. So my daughter said, Well, if you don't do that, you're going to college. And um look. He stay in house. But look at this. That's the village. Yeah. That's the yeah. village. We, we all, village. Yes. We all are part the village. of the village. Yeah. We're all a part of the village. Okay. Huh? No, because even with my sons and piggybacking off of what she said now, coming up, you know, you got the games the and so forth like that. I never knew this, but this is the power of prayer and this is God Almighty. They coming up and coming across the games or whatever have you. And for whatever reason, and I know it wasn't nobody but God, mm -hmm. where if someone was about to jump off, there was a particular, well, my son is, is cool with him now. They're not close, but, you know, they know each other. Hey, you know, what's up in the street? And was about to do something to one of my younger sons. And the guy in the gang, the head, was like, no, 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 that's Mike's brother. Don't bother him. So when they would see the three of them, no, that's Mike. No, that's Mike's two brothers. Oh, that's Mike. Yeah, he's cool. Don't bother him. See? So the prayer and God just covering yeah. them. Yeah. And even with my son saying as early as last week, uh, piggybacking off of what everyone has said is in terms of the influence of what you're, how you bring them up. And you're hoping that they're doing it. But then my son says something to the effect that he said, well, mommy, you have to trust that how you raised us, we're going to implement that out in the street. And it, mm -hmm. I was in the kitchen, and I tell you, I did a cold stop and had to turn around and look at him. And like, you know what? You you absolutely right. Yeah, trust and God. Don't worry about trust God. Am, am I out there doing X Y Z A B C? He said, "Mommy, you got to trust that how you raised us, we we doing that when mm -hmm. we're not in your presence." Look at that. And I'm like, okay, God. And that was God telling me, stop, my my manager. Look, you know you did what you did. Get out of my way. He look, got look, this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Like, get out. Okay, get out. He I'm did. Like, all right. 
I had to raise my head to stop. I'm gonna say you, you said that like you God you can't right. do anything for you if you got your hand in what? it. What? And that's exactly what that taught me right there. He's like, Mommy, you gotta trust that. I well, you know what? Us. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna like, pick on you right now. <laughs> now I'm gonna pick on you. Pray yourself, Sandra. Oh my God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the lesson that we, that we learned today. We thank you for the instructor. We thank you, God, that every time we come before you and get before you, there is always something to be learned. Your precepts, mm -hmm. your concepts, your but the Bible, Lord God, is a moral compass. That's our guide. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this brand new year that we're in, hey, oh, Father yeah. God, and that you will carry us on through to another year. But God, keep us in this year, 2023. Once again, Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for the instructor. Thank you for each and every one here assembled. Bless their homes and their loved ones, oh God, in a mighty way. In the blessed name of Yeshua, I pray, pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.